What if a company with zero revenue is burning hundreds of millions of dollars a year, yet still has automakers all lining up to partner with it? But what if technology promises to fix the current issues we have with EV batteries? And then the real question that investors keep asking is, can this company realistically triple from here? Or is that all just hope wrapped in hype? Well, that's exactly what I'm breaking down today. The technology, the progress, the risks, and whether QuantumScape actually deserves investors' patience at this stage. Now, if you're new to the channel, hey, what's up? My name is Rick Orford. I've been trading since 1999, and no, I'm not a financial advisor. That is a good thing. I break down the numbers so retail investors like us can make smarter, more confident decisions with our money. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. The Motley Fool is a company that provides investing insight and stock recommendations for investors of all skill sets and risk levels. And you all know how much I love researching new stocks and trying to find the next best investment. So I'm proud to partner with The Motley Fool to bring you 10 stock picks from their popular product, Stock Advisor. Stock Advisor has beaten the market by almost six times. Go to fool.com slash Rico to get your 10 stock picks right now. QuantumScape operates in California and has been developing battery technology since, get this, 2010. Its goal is simple but very ambitious, to create electric vehicle batteries that are more efficient than the lithium-ion batteries that we use today. Specifically, QuantumScape is building solid-state lithium metal batteries for electric vehicles. Now, traditional electric vehicle batteries rely on liquid electrolytes, but QuantumScape replaces that with a ceramic separator, which is designed to hold more energy and charge much faster than conventional batteries. Now, most of QuantumScape's customers right now are the large automakers trying to solve the biggest pain points in electric vehicles. That's mainly driving range and charging time. Its most important partner right now is Volkswagen, which has invested hundreds of millions of dollars through its battery subsidiary, PowerCo. And I think that kind of validation from a major automaker is critical for QuantumScape's long-term future. Now, recently, in December of 2025, QuantumScape reached its final goal for the year related to commercial engagement expansion. The biggest update was signing a joint development agreement with another top 10 global automaker. Overall, 2025 was a solid year for the company. It expanded its power co-agreement by up to $131 million over two years. And QuantumScape also signed agreements with ceramics manufacturing leaders in Murata and Corning. Now, both of these companies bring to the table decades of experience producing ceramic materials at scale. And I see these partnerships as a meaningful de-risking. QuantumScape is no longer dependent on a single partner. Instead, it's got an ecosystem that's built of specialized partners, each contributing expertise that improves the odds of reaching commercialization eventually. Now, Let's have a look at the financials. QuantumScape, of course, is still pre-revenue, so it continues to spend heavily on research and development. In the third quarter of 2025, the company reported that customer billings were just $12.8 million. This was the first time, though, this metric appeared and reflects early payments from automotive partners. It is small, but it's an encouraging sign of commercial engagement. Operating expenses declined 12% to $115 million, and operating loss also improved 12% to $115 million. Net loss improved 12% as well, coming in at $105.8 million, or about $0.18 cents a share, driven largely by cost control. On the balance sheet side, QuantumScape reported about a billion dollars in liquidity. Lots of money here, right? And capital expenditures fell to $9.6 million from $17.9 million as major installations were completed. Adjusted EBITDA loss also improved 14% to $61.4 million. Now, for full year 2025, capital spending guidance was reduced to between 30 and 40 million, down from 60 to 75 million. 
And most importantly, management extended the company's cash runway all the way through 2029. That means their current resources can fund the operations for about four more years without needing to raise any additional capital. Right now, QuantumScape is trading around $10 a share. And honestly, in order for the stock to triple from here, I think that's a tall order, but it's not completely out of the question. The key factor here is going to be successful commercialization between this year and 2027. And that word successful really matters because QuantumScape is targeting 2026 to begin field testing its batteries in real vehicles. This is when the technology leaves the lab and gets tested in real-world conditions. It's also important to remember that QuantumScape uses a licensing model. So instead of spending billions of dollars building factories, it plans to license its technology to automakers and collect royalties. So this model will allow the company to generate royalty streams if the partners move forward. And believe me, they want to. Of course they do. The company's already received up to $131 million over two years from PowerCo and signed development agreements from multiple top 10 automakers. If the field tests succeed, it could lead to production licensing deals that generate royalties without massive capital spending. And I think that scenario would also trigger a meaningful revaluation of the stock. 3X becomes realistic if investor confidence improves and multiple manufacturers start to adopt the technology. Another potential catalyst here is the Cobra separating process. Now, Cobra is QuantumScape's new method for producing the ceramic separator, which is one of the most critical components of the battery design. Traditional ceramic production requires extremely high temperatures over long periods, which creates a major bottleneck to scale. I mean, you can't just mass produce batteries efficiently if each separator takes too long to make, right? But Cobra, it changes that. The company estimates about a 25 times improvement in production speed. So what used to take 25 hours can now be completed in about one. And I see this as a major breakthrough in manufacturing efficiency. Of course, the real test comes next month in February 2026, when QuantumScape launches its Eagle Line pilot facility. And this line is designed to prove whether Cobra can actually produce high-quality cells at commercial volumes. If it works, the entire platform gains credibility. And that kind of validation could increase manufacturer interest and, of course, act as a huge catalyst for the stock as risk decreases. But, of course, Talking about risk, there are risks to the story, and QuantumScape faces execution risk around this 2026 timeline. The market has already shown very little patience for delays. The company originally targeted 2024 for commercialization before pushing timelines out to this year, and any further delays will likely trigger some negative reactions since investors have already adjusted their expectations. Competition is also intensifying. Chinese battery makers like CATL and BYD are developing their own semi-solid battery solutions that could reach the market faster and at a lower cost. If competitors deliver batteries with similar performance and at lower prices, automakers could choose the cheaper and lower risk option. And at the same time, QuantumScape is burning between 250 and 280 million a year. Even with runway extended through 2029, the company is still largely pre-revenue. That, that's potentially another billion dollars or more that's spent before commercialization. So if licensing deals fail to materialize, QuantumScape may eventually need to raise more capital, and that'll most likely mean pressure to the stock or to shareholders like us. Now, let's have a look at the stock itself because that's probably why you're here. Now, again, QuantumScape is currently trading around $10 a share. Now, over the past six months, the stock is up about 7%. Over one year, it's up, well, it's more than doubled. But over three years, the total return is only about 39%. So that volatility can definitely test investor patience. If we look further back, the stock traded above $80 in early 2021 before collapsing as the market reassessed 
pre-revenue tech companies. Since QuantumScape generates very little revenue, traditional valuations don't really apply. I think the closest metric here is going to be the price to book, which sits around five times. That means investors are paying more than five times the company's net asset value. For a pre-revenue company, I think it's kind of expensive. Investors are clearly paying for future potential, not current performance, and that always comes with risk, of course. Now, I expect the stock to continue to remain volatile in 2026 with performance very closely tied to milestone execution. So does that make QuantumScape a buy today? Well, consider that a consensus among 10 analysts rate the stock a moderate sell with an average score of 2.4 out of 5, and that rating has been trending lower over the past three months. The high target price is $16, and it suggests about 48% upside from here. So based on everything I've covered, I have to agree that QuantumScape is probably a hold. The potential for the stock to triple exists if execution goes perfectly, but it's far from guaranteed. I'd like to see some real commercialization progress before considering a position. So that's my take on QuantumScape, but what about you? Do you think 2026 is going to be a breakout year for the company? Let me know in the comments below. And while you're there, if you found the video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe because it helps others find the video, it supports the channel, and it makes sure that you don't miss out on my next deep dive. Well, that's it for me today. Thank you so much for watching. As usual, I'll see you next time.